Generic greetings and welcome to Subnautica. This is a survival game that I picked up about two years ago when a friend recommended it to me. I played approximately seven minutes before uninstalling it and never touching it again until about a week ago when I reinstalled it because it was released from early access and I'm so glad that I did that because when I first played it, it was just... It, it was a survival game underwater, right? You know, there wasn't much story, if any, if I remember. Um, there was you just surviving. I was so disillusioned at the time with survival games. Yeah, you get food and water and warmth and uh, boring, seen it before. But now, I'm, like I say, I'm so glad that I waited because it's got story, it's got intrigue. Exploration is its core concept. The whole point is you have to look around and find different places. That's one of the great things about it. So... I thought I'd pick it up again and try it out, and I've put about 10 hours in. In fact, I can tell you exactly how long I've put in. Uh, 9 hours, 8 minutes on this save here, and I had about a 45-minute save on another one that I've deleted as well because I messed it up. But yeah, put a lot of hours into it since then, so I thought, well, why not do a series on it? I don't know whether it'll be a fully completed series or whether we'll just get so far and call it a day. It really depends on uh, what you think and how much people are enjoying it and things like that. But either way, um, there will be spoilers in this. Spoiler alert, because the whole point is that it's uh, story-driven. You have to explore. There'll be different things to see see and obviously I'll be showing you all of that in the saw. Fair enough, you know, you've, you've had your fair warning there. If you like the idea of uh, an exp exploration slash survival game under the sea, then um, links in the description, knock the video off, there you go, blah blah blah. Right, so let's you go to start a new game and crack on. So, You've got four options for this. You've got survival, which is your standard mode. So you crash land on an alien planet. Uh, your food, water, uh, health, and O2. Freedom, which is like survival without hunger and thirst. Hardcore, which is survival mode with only one life, so permadeath. And then creative, so build with anything, build things with no constraints. We're not going to do creative because that's uh, a bit too far that, that other way. Hardcore is too far the other way. It's between survival and freedom. And I've played the survival one where you have to be fed and watered. And quite frankly, I find after a little while, getting food and water a bit tedious so we're going to go for freedom which is survival without the hunger or thirst and I think that's better for a series because you don't have to watch me scavenging for fish every 20 minutes or every every 10 minutes go all right I need to go and find some bladder fish because we got some you know we, we got some thirst and yeah I, I just think it's gonna be better for a series we still have to gather resources we can still be attacked and killed and you know respawn and stuff like that so I mean, there's still loss and things like that in it. It's just not, it's, you know, we're not just having to worry about a bar going low and then picking up um, some fish and frying it off. Hmm. I have some beverage here with me as well. Today's beverage is brine. Mmm, nice salty water. In fact, it was normal water until I started playing Rainbow Six Siege about an hour ago and then all of the tears dropped it. No, it's not. It's just carbonated water. Anyway. As you can see, we've got a ship with a fairly big hole in one side and the engine's blowing up on the other. That is in a state of disrepair, shall we say, and it's uh, heading towards this planet. That is the, uh, what's the ship called? The Aurora, I think? Either way, it's, um, it's crashing, and, uh, that's bad because, spoiler alert, that's where we are! We're on that thing, and, um, you know, obviously we don't want to be when it's uh, in that sort of state. So we're going to reject very shortly and uh, be in an escape pod and then we'll uh, splash down. So here we go. Load it up. Come on. Come on, game. It takes a while to load for some reason. Hmm. Fizzy. So the idea is that we'll have to press apparently any button to continue. Oh, no one presents the survival game without some of the survival members coming and turn them off. Okay. You can hear oh, yeah. sirens, banging, clanging, and um, apparently we didn't wait for the other person, which is not great. And, oh, there's an explosion, and that is probably going to be suboptimal for us because we're going to get hit with a shockwave in three, two, oh, no, nope, that's, that's, yeah, that's metal panels banging around the place, and I don't really like the idea of a metal panel hitting me in the fit. Yeah, that's going to leave a mark. So, um, <laughs> we are, well, pretty much concussed, I believe. Also, that's that's some fire. That's some fire. Um, call the emergency services, which we all know is 0118999. Yeah, you know the number. Uh, it's 8819991972523, actually. Let's pick up the fire extinguisher and activate said extinguishing device, and we will get rid of all of the fire because um, it's quite burny. So, that's that's gone. Um, and we'll open the PDA, fire it up, come on, tappy tap tap, and booting in emergency mode. The Altera Corporation. Come on, it's taking a while because of the last patch, which you slowed it down because Altera is that sort of company. Oh yeah, we do actually have minor head trauma, it's, con it's considered not optimal. 
Mm -hmm. So, we have to survive. That's what the objective is at the moment. Survive. Press tab to close PDA. Good, we have now worked this out. Uh, press buttons 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, to our corresponding things at the bottom. And we've got damaged secondary systems, which we need to use a repair tool. We've got a fabricator which allows us to craft all of the basic materials, electronics, uh, personal items, deployables, things like that. We've also got a medical kit fabricator, which we can pick that up there. This will slowly generate slowly generate um, medical uh, supplies. Uh, we can have a container here, which has currently got in some flares. It's got water and nutrient blocks, but they don't do anything because we're not playing that. Uh, we've also got a hatch down the bottom and a ladder up there. So we'll have a go up on the ladder, and what can we see? That's something flying overhead. And, ooh, it's a flying thing. Ah. Um, yeah. That's seen better days. So, aura suffered orbital hull failure, cause unknown. Have a look around. We can see we've got, we have got some flying things over there. We've got some other stellar bodies. Moon of some kind, or maybe we're the moon, we don't know. It uh, looks like there's something sticking out of the water over there. Um, we can jump into the water, but I think instead I will use the escape hatch at the bottom. We will open this up. And... Splash. And here we are. We are now underwater. And this is where we will spend the majority of our time. So, on the left-hand side, you can see we have... Um, our health, which is in red, and then our oxygen. It shows us a rough bar on... Um, well, how much we got left, and also the time, so currently 30 seconds. There is different biomes in the game as well. So this is uh, the safe zone, and then you've got like a kelp zone over here. We've also got, as you can see, different fish flying around. So that's a bladder fish, uh, and we can pick these fish up so we can say pick that up there. And then there you go. We've uh, we've grabbed it, so we, we might as well drop that. We don't need to... Uh, actually, no, we'll probably drop that. There you go. So we can go over to uh, the voice log, you've got your blueprints as well, and you will find different blueprints based on what you're doing. You've also got a full data bank as well on uh, what to do. So, uh, it does say start here, so we will read that and we will do that. So it says start here. Um, so full monitoring vital signs, accurate, yes, on board camera, microphone, OCR, yeah, that's fine. Survival checklist, so uh, administer it first aid if required. Let's just go back on board our little raft here, and there we go. So we will, um, you'd first aid if required, well, we we do have a first aid kit and we are damaged so we will use that and there we go we've now been healed up what else do we need to do it says take inventory of uh, materials and supplies uh, survey the environment for threats and resources construct necessary survival equipment for the life fab fabricator so we've got things like oh there's an air bladder which should be quite useful We've got a repair tool, which we do need to get because this thing is broke. So what we're going to do, we're going to jump down. Actually, no, we need a scanner first. A scanner is pretty much priority. So what do we need to make a, a scanner? We need a battery in titanium. Titanium, easy to find. Battery, we will get from... We will get from copper ore and acid mushrooms. So the acid mushrooms we can see are these things here. So we will pick up a couple of the acid mushrooms. One, two, three, and then four. That's fine. We will also have a look around for some scrap. Now, because the ship exploded... Ooh, that's a... Yeah, that's some sort of fish. Let's keep away from that because it looks very, very shark-like. Um, because the Aurora exploded, there's bits of wreckage all over the place. So we can pick that up and we can salvage this thing. And there's also a sea glide fragment in there as well. So we have to go around. Oh, it's also telling us to break limestone. So we'll bat that up and we get some copper. Good. Mm-hmm. Oh, unlikely but plausible. Well, that's a relief, I guess. Ah, oh, there's some uh, big sea creatures here with... Yeah, they are filling out some sort of gas, and I really don't like the idea of that. Let's stay away from that. Um, there we go. So, I've got copper. I think I only, I think I only needed the one copper, didn't I, for the scanner? I think so. On the top as well, it shows you power for the vessel you are in, currently 75 and 75, because we have solar panels. Actually, we don't. Oh, one of three online, so we do have that. Um, but anyway, we'll make a battery. There we go. There's that done. We'll also make titanium. There we are. We get titanium from... Uh, what else we got? There was, there's our scanner. Job done. We get titanium from them wrecks. Or the bits of wreck. Okay. 
Okay. So, we can now scan things. And this is what we'll spend the next couple of minutes doing. So, we're going to go around. We're going to scan things like table coral. There you go. And the good thing about the game is that if you if you have the time or you have the inclination, I guess, you can happily go into your data bank and you'll find things like all of the lists for the uh, various fauna and flora and uh, what's in there and what you can do and uh, what it's... Uh, it's always got a bit of blurb on there telling you what it's like and what, uh, what it's useful for. So this is a peeper fish which we'll scan because why not? We've got some weird tube type thing, which will give that a good scan. There you go. You know, you don't get experience for doing this. There's no experience in the game. The way you make stuff is um, by exploring and taking samples and scanning. That's the point. You don't just, uh, you can't just like mine a boatload of resources and get what you need that way. You have to, uh, and then unlock it. I mean, you have to uh, do it other ways. And ooh, this is fairly dark in here. Is that quartz? It is quartz. We'll pick that up though. Right, so we need sulfur. I have to worry about my my oxygen. Um, a lot of quartz in here. Only ten seconds remaining. Oxygen. That's our ten-second warning. Oh, six, five, three. No, no. Uh, come on. <laughs> and deep breath. We're fine. <laughs> Everything's fine. <laughs> Right, so, uh, let's have a scan of these guys. It's called a gas pod. For obvious reasons, because it kicks out a lot of gas. Okay. Also, sea glide there. Oh, we're getting hurt because of it. Don't know how we're getting hurt with gas, because we have... Have we got a rebreather on? I assume so. Actually, no, we don't. I'm trying to scan some of these fish. Although, what's that there? That's a... Uh, more samples, more samples. So we're going to try and get a repair tool that will allow us to repair some of the pod or some of the pod systems. The entrance to this cave was in here. Now it did, it did say that the sofa around here it didn't say where though. Is that an alien egg? That is an, a creature egg. I will pick it up. Can't scan that. Uh... Mm -hmm. That's true enough. <laughs> yeah, you. if you get lost in this game, you can be in deep, deep trouble. You don't even have that deep to, to get into trouble either. You just have to lose your way. There's that ray. Come on, scan the ray. D damn it, they really run quite fast, those things. Um, in some of these boxes as well, you will start finding things like that in fragments, or so vehicle bay fragments and stuff. That looks fairly... Naughty. Ooh, it's a stalker. Yep. Yeah, okay. It's it's now hostile. We know this. Don't worry. I can scan it. Those things are quite useful uh, later on because you can feed it different resources. It, it, for some reason, it really likes metal, uh, and you can read that in the log as well. If you go over to stalker, um, but it, it tells you that it likes if it, it gathers different bits of metal and such, uh, and you can use that to your advantage. Um, there's nothing in here. It's just a blocked off cave, which is interesting. Although that one, it seems we can get access to that. Right, so let's go down in here and see if we can find some cave sulfur. A torch would be nice, actually. Limestone chunk. There's a Gary fish, is it? Yeah, a Gary fish. There we go. Um, you know what? I'm not going to explore this cave because immediately, yeah, I've, I've shown you the problem. I've totally lost my way. This is bad. I've got no torch and I'm under the water. I can't see anything. Damn it. Um, oh, there's the way out, but I don't think I'm going to make it. That's bad. That's bad. Oh, come on. Th come on. It'll st we'll start to black out, but we'll just make it. That was close. That was very, very close. Okay. Have we got... What have we got at the moment? At the moment, on us, we've got nothing. We're currently naked. Okay, we need to sort that out. So, let's go for... We'll make some titanium from the basic metal salvage. 
There we go. We will make ourselves um, a standard O2 tank so we can dive deeper. That's going to be useful. There we go. We can also make a high capacity uh, O2 tank as well. And fins, which is silicone rubber. Silicone rubber requires creep vine seed clusters. Okay, I know where those are. Uh, they are over... Over there. Yes, over there. We don't have a compass yet, but you can get one. And for some reason, these creatures are here. The the world itself, as far as I'm aware, is, is not randomly generated. In fact, I know it's not randomly generated. At least that's what I've read. Um, but the... Let's scan this bladder fish. There we go. But um, some of the... Some of the map does change. It is random in place, like what spawns and where. So we've got some of this creep vine stuff. So one, two, three, four. New blueprint acquired. Good. And you can see now we've got much more time underwater because of that. That fin. <laughs> I don't know why it makes that noise. <laughs> okay. So we'll need to get sulfur, and I know where the sulfur is. It's in um, basically some exploding fish. <laughs> Actually, it's, it's in their lair, to be quite, to be accurate. Um, so we want that's lubricant. But we want to make silicon rubber. We'll make, I believe, a couple of those. There we go, and that will give us the ability to make some fins and swim faster. Excellent. Okay. So what it's telling us there Hmm, that's not good. So what it's telling us there is that the fabricator will essentially add stuff as we progress on. As we as we do more things, it will um and explore more, it'll say, right, you know this now, so you know, like, what things made up. So if I, if I hit, say, the coral and get a sample, that said radiation. That's not good. Hmm. <laughs> radiation? That, no. We, we, we don't want any of that, please. Anyway, yes, as I was saying, the, uh, the game will automatically unlock different resources as we progress on. So if we, like, say gather samples like that it'll be useful for us I'm going to drop some of this though because I don't need that nor do I need that, although can I scan the sample uh oh, exploding fish ow ok, fish exploded, but we can go down here and there is sulfur there, uh oh fish, 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 fish thank you very much ok, we know there's fish down here though and we can scan the sulfur plant. It lives in the sulfur plant, apparently. Yeah, there's no way I'm going in that cave. <laughs> it's tiny, and we can't see almost anything. Right, so... Let's get some more samples. It says cut with knife. Okay, I will cut with knife. Now, I have a creep vine sample. New blueprint synthesized from alien resource. So, we've got more resources, or we've scanned resources, got samples. We can now uh, continue on, so... Good progress. Um, the only thing that's missing from this to the survival version is I would have I would have to be uh, picking up some of those fish we've seen and making. Hang on. Uh, oh, it's not in here because we can't craft it. But I would be making from bladder fish. You turn bladder fish into just water bottles because obviously the first thing you do as uh, humans is come to an ocean planet and then completely fill it with plastic. Um, but also you can cook other fish as well. So anyway, we've got a Pathfinder tool, which is supplies holographic Pathfinder discs used to map a way back out of caves. Okay, we've got a repair tool, which we'll get now and we'll repair the Aurora. There we go. Oh, sorry, we won't repair the Aurora, at least not yet. Uh, we'll repair this bit here. Um, speaking of repairing the Aurora, I'm, I'm just going to let you know now. Oh. There we go, it's getting rid of all the smoke. It's doing stuff around here, we'll repair the radio. Yeah, I'm just going to let you know now, um, as mentioned at the start, I don't know whether we will finish the game. Um, and there is ends to that, but we'll, we'll, we'll explore that as we progress on. But um, yeah, repairing that, don't think it's going to be possible. So, radio message. Let's play that. This is Aurora. Distress signal received. Okay. Rescue operation will be just 
Not entirely convinced that uh, we're going to get that <laughs> rescue. Okay, so what we're going to do, we're going to, well, for a start, because I'm very very damaged, I'm going to pick up that damage. I'm, I'm uh, wounded, I'm going to use the medical kit. I'm going to try and build a high-capacity O2 tank. Shouldn't be too hard to make. We need a standard O2 tank and silver ore. Okay, so we've got a standard O2 tank we can just put in, in there. What I'll do instead is uh, go over here and see if we can find some silver ore. So different biomes down there. There's also a shark of some kind. I really want to stay away from a shark. We do have beacon fragments now though. That's good. Beacon's very useful for finding your way and also counters as well because you can build bases. Uh, we will be building bases at some point. You can build um, submarines and things like that. There's a sea glide fragment. If we can get a sea glide in the first couple of episodes that'll really help us out. Gives you a lot of a lot more Speed and there's a shark. Yeah, it's a it's a sand shark, and we can actually sort of scan it and run around. Though it can't really, can't really uh, do as much harm if we keep spinning around. There we go. Thirty seconds of oxygen. We'll go back to the top. Okay, so we've had a scan of the debris over there. I think we've got most of it. Although there's some on a shelf, so we might go ahead and scan that little bit there. Don't know how that bit's still on fire either. Oh, there was also some bit in here, wasn't there? Yes, there was. Sea glide fragment. If we can make a sea glide, that'll be very good. Yes, now we can make a sea glide. It's essentially a, a torch. It's a torch, a propeller, and a holographic screen that you just hold on to for... <laughs> for dear life, really, because you will, um... Yeah. Be uh, hanging out. <laughs> You're basically hanging onto it as it uh, zooms along. Uh, there is some salt deposit. Salt I don't think is going to be useful to us really because we are not having to cure anything. Um, you do... Was there a fish I could scan there? What fish was that that I could scan? Or what was it that I could scan? Hmm. You can also do a self-scan. Okay. Vital size normal. That is good. Yes, as I was saying, um, you, when you have salt, you can use that to cure things. Uh, cure fish so they last longer, but obviously we don't really need to do that because well, we don't need to do that at all because we're not um, in survival. Lithium storm. We might as well scan it. That's copper. That's good. So we're looking ideally for... Uh oh, shark, 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 not good. <laughs> Horrible thing. Right. It's down there still, is it? I'm going to go back in, I'm going to risk it. Scan the metal salvage, then I'll pick it up. That's what it was probably was here for. I was going to say, I've never seen it in a cave like that. It was probably here for that, because they do um, like to do that. Ah, there we go. Yes. I've just got uh, I've just got a silver ore. That's good. That's useful. Right. So go up here. Any message to play? No. We will make. Hmm. We got a sea glide there, which is copper wire, battery lubricant, other things. Um, high capacity O2 tank. Probably the be probably the better way to go. So we're going to take our O2 tank and put it in there. Use the fabricator. Get some titanium. And then we'll make ourselves a high capacity O2 tank. Excellent. And there we go. So, m look, oh yeah, that's that's doubled it, I think. The amount we can go. That's excellent. So, we want to make a battery. We want to make, uh, we're making a sea glide. We need some lubricant, which we can make by picking up some of that. There we go. So, we'll say electronics. Um... Lubricant, that's made from that uh, creep fine stuff. Is essential in construction of vehicles and copper wire. And copper wire. Alright, so we've now got a sea glide. Excellent. I honestly thought it was going to take us a lot longer to make a sea glide, but um, yeah, do not underestimate sea glides. They're very, very useful. For your safety, 
please pack supplies for long journeys and stay within five kilometers of the nearest love pod or habitat. Yeah, that would be useful. Right, so we now have a sea glide. Shall we have a little scout around? Because we can switch to the sea glide and way. So it's a lot faster. It's got a torch on the front. We can turn them on and off. And uh, we can sort of zoom about. And what the hell are those things? It's a floater. Hmm. Indigenous life forms. Cool. And you can see how fast we're going now. Like, if you don't have one of these early on, it is... Uh, a huge, I wouldn't say a problem, but it's uh, well, it's a lot more annoying to navigate, because you're just not going as fast. But now with that rebreather, uh, we haven't got a rebreather, sorry, with the um, with the high capacity O2 tank, with this, we can really start uh, drifting about. But not too far, because there's probably horrible beasties not too far away. Let's have a look down here. What have we got? Whatever it is, it's very, very red. It's very nice, actually. Very pretty. The game seems to have equal parts um, beauty and um, stark horror. Um, <laughs> it really does at times. Um, oh, there's a one of those. This is a... Um, don't listen to that. It's a brain coral. It uh, kicks out oxygen. That's also a fish. Get away. Get away. Do you want to get away? There we go. That generally gives them a bit of a deterrent. There we are. So, um, what else is around here? Let's go back to the sea glide. And, oh, radio message. There's a radio message coming in. Let's uh, go back and see if we can listen to that. See that fish jumping out of the water there. <laughs> okay, we'll go up and we'll play the message. So, play. Pre-record distress call, okay. From the cafeteria. What the hell, guys? <laughs> they didn't want us. This might happen. No. Our pod was almost crushed by this seamoth bay on the way down. Now we're hanging on the edge of a cave system. And this grim-looking snake thing's trying to eat through the hull. That sound good. Signal location uploaded to PDA. Okay, so we know where he is. There, hundred meters down. Okay, let's uh, let's go and explore that. Actually, we'll go and explore that next episode. I think that's a good place to leave it off. So, first episode, not too bad at all. I don't think we've managed to get a scanner. We've got a knife. We came with the uh, the fire extinguisher. A repair tool, which we've already repaired um, some of the systems in here, including the uh, well, the pod and uh, the radio, and we've also got a sea glide so we can get around uh, much better. We've also made a high capacity O2 tank and some fins. So for a first episode, very very happy with that progress. Next, we'll go over there. We'll go for that life life pod 17. We'll have a scout around and see what we can find. So as always, hope you have enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching. Take care and generic partings.